take a look at this problem and try to find its uh, extrema. Let's start by taking the derivative. f prime of x is equal to cosine of x plus pi over 4. And is there a chain rule here? There is, but the chain rule is 1, so I'm not even going to write it. Okay, are there any values where cosine is going to equal 0 on that interval? See, cosine, cosine of pi over 2 equals 0, right? So, what? Okay, I'm just going to say cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. So when x plus pi over 4 is equal to pi over 2, that that expression is going to equal 0. So when... So when x is pi over 4, is that good? So is that number in that interval? Great. Any other places where cosine is going to equal 0? How about cosine of 3 pi over 2? So for what value of x do I get 3 pi over 2? See, I don't know. x plus pi over 4 is equal to 3 pi over 2. That means x is equal to 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 4, which is 6 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. How about 5 pi over 4? Is that right? Yeah. So that's another location where that function is equal to 0. And that value is in, is in the interval. I don't think there are any there are any more. I don't think. You're not contradicting me, so let's go ahead. So let's list our candidates. What are the candidates for locations of extrema? X equals zero? X equal seven pi over four? X is equal to pi over 4, and x is equal to 5 pi over 4. What is f of 0? Sine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2, if I remember correctly. Yeah? Yeah? Yes. Okay, great. What is f of 7 pi over 4, which is sine of 7 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 8 pi over 4. 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi. I hope I did that right. Did I do it right? Oh, sine of 2 pi is not The, the, the credit, when I put 7 pi over 4 into that, oh, I get oh. 7 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, which is 8 pi over 4. 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi. Yes. Sine of 2 pi is 0. All right. Next, f of pi over 4, which is going to be sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Sorry, i got to go through the graph. of. For those of you watching at home, I'm making a sine curve with my pen and trying to remember where, where sine has all the different values. Of course, if you're watching at home, God bless you. Lord knows you are enduring a fate worse than death. All right. So
sine of, okay, f of pi over 4 is sine of 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. Negative 1. Okay, so what do we got? I declare this to be our absolute minimum. Also a local minimum. I declare this to be our absolute max. Couldn't you just find where sine equals 1, like just at the beginning, and then that's your absolute maximum? Um, yeah, because I mean the fact that sine is equal to the absolute value of, the absolute, value, the absolute maximum for sine is 1 is not a really big surprise. Right. Except for this. And that is, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, when we limit, when we limit the domain, when we're, we're working on, you know, when we got lots of width on our domain, we expect that sine's going to get up to one and get all the way down to negative one, maybe even several times in the course of a really wide domain. When we limit the domain, only when we find those critical points do we know that it reaches because the critical point when we get the horizontal tangent, that's only the only time we know that we're actually going to get to the, either those maximum values or, or um, minimum values. So this helps us make sure that we actually go through some of those points on the way. You've got to be kidding me. All right. How about these other two, by the way? The other two, are they relative minimum or relative max? Okay, what I would expect that we're going to do is that when we start here and then our next stop is at an absolute max, this is going to be, sorry, I used the word relative, I meant, I expect that's a local min. Now, I didn't use the same methodology I used on the previous problem, but I'm going to say it's a local min. Can you see the reasoning why? We go to these points in this order. So if I was to draw it out, if on step two I'm at a max, I have to be lower than that beforehand. So I'm starting low, I go high, I go back low again, and I end High. Are we okay with that methodology? What's the other way I can look at this in terms of the F prime number line? I've got a critical value at pi over 4. I've got another critical value at 5 pi over 4. In between these two points, I go from a max to a min, so I'm decreasing on that, that little spot on the, on the, for the function, f of x. The derivative of itself is negative. Prior to that, I'm positive and I'm positive. I am increasing on this interval, which means when I come to the end, I'm at a local maximum. I start someplace and I increase to get to that local, so that absolute max that's here, which means I must be starting lower than that. So it's got to be a, rel a local minimum at zero. All right, and that's number 15.